Akshay here. So today's demonstration of learning is going to be about heat, the laws of thermodynamics. I hope you enjoy. The first and foremost of these laws is the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The zeroth law states that if two objects or materials are touching each other, they will eventually reach the same temperature. The first law of thermodynamics addresses the conservation of energy. All energy is conserved. No, no energy is created or destroyed. If energy does seem to be created or destroyed, it's due to a transfer between two objects. The third and final law of thermodynamics states that no material can reach the temperature of absolute zero. That is the point where no atom or molecule is moving. The reason for this is that, according to the second law of thermodynamics, to extract heat from a substance, you need something colder than it. And if there's nothing colder than it, you can't have that temperature. Thus, absolute zero is impossible. Yet how does this all link to our system that we're using? Well, come with me and I'll show you. This here is our passive solar house. The purpose of this is to use a passive system to cool the house during the day and heat it during the night. To do this, we have to separate the inside from the outside temperature. To do this, we have to prevent conduction. And there are two ways to do that. The first and most important is by sealing off the inside. We have done that by using walls, of course, and by sealing off the sides with the foam. The second mo uh, important factor is insulation. We have used foam for insulation during the day, and we are planning on using a blanket for insulation during the night. This will prevent, even further, the heat to be transferred from the inside to the outside, cooling the inside. Beyond that, though, there are several other factors of heating and cooling a house passively. One other important factor is thermal mass, which we have used bricks for, covered in a black fabric. First of all, we have used the black fabric because black, or any dark colors really, absorb light, which is an important factor because light is our main source of energy in this area. The way we get light into this house is actually one of the three methods of energy transfer. It is radiation, the transfer of heat through light. And that is how we can heat the bricks and the lead weight that are within our house. Below the cloth, we have the bricks. And the bricks absorb a lot of heat. However, they are fairly good conductors, so they would soak up, or they would rather transfer heat to the ground if we do not insulate them with the foam underneath there from the ground. The purpose of the bricks, though, is to heat the house during the night. It'll store energy during the day, and when night comes around and it cools down, it'll heat back up because of the heat energy stored in the bricks. One of the pieces of advice that we have received is to insulate the bricks. However, although this would insulate the bricks and prevent even further the heat from being transferred outside, at this point, the only way we could do that is by putting foam on the outside. There is one reason that this wouldn't work though. Once the energy is conducted outside of the box, we have the problem of convection. The heat energy is quickly convected away in the air. Convection is the rising of heat from a cool area and the sinking of cool air or any other type of cool substance. Thus, we knew that putting insulation on the outside wouldn't help at all our cause. The reason bricks are such a good thermal mass is because they have a very high heat capacity like water, which is used in this solar house right here. Some materials, such as conductors, don't hold a lot of heat at a time, and thus adapt very quickly to their environment. However, that is not what we want, so we chose a material that can absorb a lot of heat and keep that heat without adapting the environment's temperature. Well, there you have it, folks. That's my demonstration of learning about the flow of energy and heat. I hope you enjoyed, and please stay tuned to both my YouTube channel, AC2Zoom, and my blog, Hlana, A-C-H-A-L-A-N-A, -A -A dot evolutionofinstruction.org. Thank you. Goodbye.